Good morning. In our previous lesson, we determined the force of impact on my body after stepping off a wall. Flippin' physics. Why is it still bathroom day? <laughs> bathroom day. Because today's lesson is an extension of the previous one. Bo, would you say I bend my knees a little or a lot in the example? That looks like a lot of knee bending to me. I would agree. Now we are going to analyze what happens when I don't bend my knees when stepping off the wall. Wait, guys, that's not Mr. P, I think that's a really bad uh, no, I'm not really going to not bend my knees when stepping off the wall, and clearly you all understand that this is not a good idea. But who can use physics to explain to me why this is not a good idea? Okay, let's review a little bit from last time. The force of impact during a collision equals the change in momentum over change in time, and that equals mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial divided by change in time. And last time when I bent my knees, we determined all of these variables. My mass is 73 kilograms. My final velocity after striking the ground is zero. I stopped. My velocity right before striking the ground is 3.7897 meters per second down, and the change in time while I'm colliding with the ground is 0 0.28 seconds. And therefore, the force of impact is 988.03 newtons, or with 4.448 newtons in every pound, the force of impact acting on my body when I collide with the ground and bend my knees is roughly 220 pounds. But let's go back to my question, which was, what changes when I don't bend my knees. Well, clearly your mass doesn't change. And your final velocity is still zero. You're, you're going to stop regardless of whether you bend your knees or not. And your initial velocity right before striking the ground will be the same because you stepped off the same wall. So the only variable which is different if you don't bend your knees is the change in time. Correct. Everything in the numerator remains the same regardless of whether I bend my knees or not the change in momentum stays the same, which is why change in momentum is given a special name. Change in momentum is called impulse, and the symbol for impulse is capital J, or sometimes capital I, which is why I will usually just write out the whole word impulse. Please also notice that impulse is a vector. And also, we can rearrange Newton's second law to get net force times change in time equals change in momentum, which equals impulse. In other words, impulse equals both change in momentum and net force times change in time. Now, this can be a point of confusion for students, so let me repeat it. Impulse equals both change in momentum and net force times change in time. Impulse equals change in momentum, and impulse also equals net force times change in time. Bobby, please determine the impulse during this collision. Impulse equals net force times change in time, so it's 988.03 times 0.28, which is 276.6 five or 280 with two significant digits, and the units are newtons times seconds. Correct, Bobby. Mr. P? Uh, yes, Billy? Can we also say impulse equals change in momentum or mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial, which equals uh, 73 times zero minus 73 times negative 3.7897, which is 276.65, or 280 with two significant digits, uh, kilograms times meters per second. And newtons times seconds are the same as kilograms times meters per second, because a newton is a kilogram times meters per second squared, and seconds cancel out. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But we actually have yet to answer the question, which was, why, using physics, is it bad to not bend your knees when stepping off a wall? 
Well, we already identified that the only variable which is different is the change in time. So if you don't bend your knees, the change in time will be smaller and therefore the net force will be larger even though the impulse remains the same. Bobby, that was really well said, thanks. Okay, in order to estimate the time of collision if I did not bend my knees when stepping off the wall, I dropped a tomato. Looking at just the collision with the ground, you can see the time of impact is roughly 0.02 seconds. Now, this happens so quickly, we need to use the frame count in order to get a more accurate change in time during the collision. The collision lasts for a total of six frames. This video has 240 frames every second, therefore the change in time is six frames times one second divided by 240 frames or 0.025 seconds. We can use the same equation we used before for the force of impact, only now we have a new change in time. We get a net force of roughly 11,000 newtons or 2,500 pounds. Estimating that the time of collision if I do not bend my knees is the same as the time of collision for the tomato means that the force on my body was roughly 11 times what it was before when I bent my knees. Again, this is because regardless of whether I do or do not bend my knees, the impulse will remain the same. However, bending my knees increases the change in time and therefore decreases the force of impact on my body. Now, there are many examples where we increase the change in time during the collision to decrease the force of impact. Seat belts, airbags, automobile crumple zones, packaging foam, bike helmets. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you. No tomatoes were wasted in the making of this video. <laughs>